murder in the beat. So just like the online gaming community and online fitness community have their fair share of dumpster fires. Tell me that again, dude. <laughs> what you gonna do? Tell me what the fuck I'm gonna do. I'm not fucking around. So does the online music community. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't have the greatest taste in music. Fuck, you've all heard my background music. For real though. The only rap I listen to is old rap, and even then it's only like 10 songs. What I do have though, is the ability to assess a situation and determine when someone is in over their head. And even though our topic falls under both categories, I'm going to focus on the latter here. I was initially going to hold off on an Uncle Adam's video, but like I told you guys before, I'm completely down with suggestions. My man Kane has been watching my videos for, for 4 months. He knows what this channel's about. He's going to come watch my shit, comment, and contribute. I'll take what he has to say into consideration. This is a group effort, guys. We got a lot of crazies to catalog. And today we're here to talk about Canadian rapper Uncle Adams. It's not often I get to talk about a fellow Canadian, which is surprising because there's actually quite a bit of material up here. Okay, Have this is important. I, I'm not in the term no IQ interventions. And this, so you shut the fuck up for one minute. Okay, fine, fuck, man. So All right. This, don't let this snow covered wasteland fool you. We keep our cattle well fed. The story of Uncle Adams at face value doesn't seem like anything special. But when you start to peel back the pages, the whole picture comes into view. And it's nothing short of a car crash waiting to happen with a driver who doesn't know when to brake. So what exactly am I talking about? What's so dangerous about making music in Saskatchewan? Well, it's not the making music per se, it's the lengths the person will go to to achieve a dream. This could be considered a cautionary tale. We're going to do a little bit of psychoanalyzing, even though we're nowhere near qualified to do so. But that does seem to be the thing to do nowadays. Having a mental illness doesn't mean that you aren't responsible for your actions. We are all responsible for our actions. See, like I said before, Thunk, there's nothing crazy that stands out at first. When I first jumped down the Alam rabbit hole, I was actually kind of blown away. It's slightly confused. I didn't believe it. For a few reasons, but mainly I thought it was a scam. And either Unc was going to slap down a GoFundMe, or something along those lines. I was wrong though. It's a whole different creature in itself. So let's talk about Unc and what exactly happens when dedication turns into insanity. Uncle Adams is an aspiring rapper from Saskatchewan, Canada. His main way of promoting his music is through YouTube, Spotify, along with Facebook. A few of his songs have had moderate success, but not really for the reasons intended. See, Uncle Adam's music is well made, no doubt about that. But, um, well, I guess I'll just have to show you. I am smarter, I am stronger, I will take it no, no longer. I have feelings, I'm a person, I will live life with purpose. Anyone else get an overwhelming sensation that they've kind of seen this before? <laughs> Don't be hating. <laughs> it's well done, but the subject matter makes it come off as a total joke, like a meme. But it isn't. It's intended to be serious. See, Unk isn't your traditional rapper. Instead of rapping about his own life experiences, he raps about motivation and positivity, anti-bullying, drunk driving awareness. Better get the message before you end up dead. Are you ready for heaven? All you gotta do is put the key keys down. I can hear him scream now. Put the damn keys down. It's not too late. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, what demographic are you really aiming for? What's what's the end goal with this? And Unk does have goals and aspirations. Are they realistic is a whole other question in itself. See, Unk is a firm believer that anyone can achieve anything through visualization and positive affirmations. A long story short, he's a child of the secret. For those of you unaware, the secret is a book about positive thinking and visualization. The book tells you that with enough uh, visualization and dedication, the universe will magically manifest whatever you want. All you have to do is just keep on thinking about it. And a lot of people actually buy into this shit. Ruined half my generation, actually. But the book kind of sets you up for defeat. I may sound like a pessimist, but I don't really believe anyone can do anything. Anyone can be competitive, but the top tier, not everyone can get there. There's too many variables. Success is based on having realistic expectations, adaption, self-reflection and growth. Or just plain luck. That does happen. But you can't just blindly throw money at things and trudge through life relying on positive thinking. When you put everything into an unrealistic goal and you don't have a plan B, you're in for a rough ride. Life's like a vehicle. It's pretty hard to get to your destination when you close your eyes and just floor it. To really show you what went wrong, we're gonna have to cover a few things. Unk's initial rise, his at least a million mission, and the aftermath that is currently going on. So how did this all start? Like I said before, Unk was always interested in rapping. He even did a small stint as a battle rapper when he was younger. So after all 
what I've done for you. You try to punch my lights out. How many times you called me crying your fucking eyes out? I can't believe that I've been so patient. Your raps are even worse than your financial situation. But that was way too toxic for him. To be honest, I'm actually a fan of the old Unk. The motivational rapping and anti-bullying was inspired around the events in 2012 that happened around Amanda Todd. This was the catalyst for Unk to make the return to the rapping game. And at first he was doing some good shit. He was talking at schools, doing presentations. A Regina rapper's message about anti-bullying is being heard around the world. Adams also travels to schools to do anti-bullying presentations. He even owned his own house and vehicle. Pretty successful for a guy in his 20s. Unk claims that he used to be a heavy equipment operator, but after seeing how he deals with deployment during his uh, Alam saga, I'm actually doubting what he said. The school presentations ended after the Regina Public School Board asked him to change some of his lyrics. According to Unk, they were uh, stifling his creativity. Even though he was on the local news, he didn't really receive any notoriety online till he released his single original in 2016. Don't get me wrong, he was still producing music and content for YouTube sporadically, but nothing was propelling him to the levels he was aiming for. And the attention he was getting isn't the kind he wanted. Anyway, I want you to know now that it's over. Their fun is over, okay? I've known for a long time. I just never thought that they deserve to be mentioned. The group is called Original Posting. They pretend to be fans, but they're actually trolls who wish bad things on me. So if you get invited to that group and you're a real fan, don't join it. Um, they often post nice things pretending to be fans, even though they're enemies. So don't be so quick to assume that just because someone's posting something nice, that they're not a troll. They try to do that. They try to, they try to mess with me. And Unk doesn't handle that stuff very well. He's not hated by everyone. He does have fans, but they mostly will watch for the cringe aspect. It's not enough for him to entertain people though, he wants to be actually taken seriously and influence people. It's hard to influence people though when the majority of your music revolves around your own success that you haven't actually achieved yet. If he went with the comedy aspect he was giving off, I could see him becoming a somewhat successful budget Weird Al or something like that. There's always room for parody music. Yo, what up party people? It's your boy Keemstar! That's not for Uncle Adams though, he just doubled down. You'll notice a pattern with Unk. He tends to limit his own opportunities. And what I mean by that is he puts himself in situations where everything is on the line and he has to succeed. He won't stop no matter what his financial situation is. He won't settle or even reevaluate his situation. He just head down, no fucks given. His mission is almost comparable to like a gambling addict. They lose all their savings and instead of calling it a loss and moving on, they just put their house up for collateral. That's the Unk mentality. All or absolutely nothing. So before I show you Unk's self-destructive lifestyle firsthand, there's one important arc we should cover here. So for the majority of Unk's career, he had a relatively small audience. A couple of his videos have hit the 100,000 mark, but it didn't really net him much notoriety, and he was kind of an inside joker, hidden gem in the music meme community. And well, when you have memes, you're gonna have some trolling. And Unk has received some mild trolling, stuff we've all seen before. So for over a year, there has been a group of trolls trolling all of my accounts, pretending to be fans, but really they have sinister intent, okay? A lot of it was coming from a Facebook group called the Original Posting. There's a lot of good memes coming from there. And everything is based on parodies of Unk's success or lack thereof. There's some especially good cuck memes in there too. I believe they're the ones that dug up his old rap battle songs which in my opinion is a lot better than some of his current stuff. Just like Jason and the Piss Troopers, sometimes a community takes the life of its own, and that's kind of what original posting is. And some members just also happen to be subscribers of Anthony Fantano, the guy from the Needle Drop on YouTube. And well, a few messages later, Fantano took the bait and did a reaction review of Unk's original song. What? What? Did he just roll, roll over backwards? Did he? Is he just doing his own stunts there? Where? Right, right here. Look at him. He rolls over backwards. Huh? That was it. Like, not, that wasn't even like a roll. He, it's like he, he dropped his key. It's like he and he's like, oh no. <laughs> I need to stand up. Oh, we can make it look like a flip, dude. It's like I'll make this look. He hired the best editor. I'm gonna make it look like you're doing flips and shit. Well, this actually caused a pretty big spike in Uncle Adam's notoriety. Not to mention, it riled him up quite a bit that pretends to be fans, but are actually trolls, 
got this YouTuber to review one of my videos. They kept messaging him, review Uncle Adams, review Uncle Adams, okay? Now this guy's name is Anthony something, okay? Uh, the needle drop. I call him the needle d And uh, my other friend watched his video too. He's like, who's this needle d guy? So everybody apparently just calls him the needle d because he just changed a few letters in his name. Plus it seems like he has a small d because he just sits there behind the screen dissing everybody all the time. And that's the story of how Needle Dick was born. This whole interaction just caused Uncle Adams to double down though, and take this crazy train to the next level. See the idea behind the at least a million mission vlogs were that he could release them after he blows up from his new song he's been working on. The vlogs were supposed to be like an inside look at his struggles before fame, but in reality it paints quite a different story leading up to the release of his new single. A story of a desperate man in denial who has no problem losing everything in the process. So right off the bat, the Alam vlogs are kind of confusing because namely, 1 through 9 were pre-recorded months prior, vlog 10 and onward aren't pre-recorded, and once you understand that it's a little bit easier to follow. Just a little bit of lore for the new nieces and nephews out there. And the vlogs, well, they start off with a bang. And I'll be honest, I owe $164,000 right now. Why? Because I chose to quit my job and go out all out after my dream a few years ago. Take that in. A couple years ago, Unc owned his own house. He had a nice vehicle and a decent job. Now he's in an apartment in debt and he's trying to sell his vehicle to eat. But I did. I sold my house and I used the equity to put into the music career. That was just like about a month and a half, two months ago. So that's already been done. That option is off of the table. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I don't have money really to keep going, but I want to keep going and I will keep going. So what do I do? Well, I'm gonna sell my car now. Well, not quite eat. See, the second vlog gives you a peek into where his money's going. If you're an aspiring artist, don't do this. It's sad to say, but in reality, nowadays if you wanna make it big, you gotta have a variety of skills. A lot of young artists aren't paying this kind of money for a setup. They're out there trying to craft their trade, maybe learn a few things on the side like beat mixing, audio mastering. You can't just write some mediocre lyrics and throw money at them. You can only polish turds so much. And by the third vlog, denial starts to set in. Adams is so determined to achieve his dream, he's starting to get tunnel vision. Do not determine where you can go and where you will be. Although I owe $164,000, although I only have 18,000 monthly Spotify listeners. Although I only have $270 in my bank account, it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna do this, I'm still gonna make it. And a big part of me documenting this process is to show you that too, that the circumstances in your life might be getting you down, but keep going, anything is possible. This is the kind of stuff I was talking about earlier, the positive affirmation junk. You see, this is, this is the mindset I have. I don't even have the money to do the video, yet I am planning the video because I believe in my vision. Everything will fall into place, but not only will it fall into place, but I will make it fall into place. You can't just manifest a successful outcome because you visualize it. The universe doesn't work that way. If it did, every incel would have their very own Megan Fox. How often do you think they visualize that? Rhetorical question, boys, rhetorical question. Anyway, as the vlogs continue, you start to see Unk's daily living situation. I remembered that I have two more cards, two more credit cards. Oh, I can't actually withdraw money, but there's still some hope because we can buy some goods from these stores, sell them, convert it to money, and keep going after this dream. Whatever it takes. Got some sawzalls, a couple of power drills, a couple of uh, 23 inch computer monitors from Best Buy, and a couple of pill speakers. So yeah, I'm not quite sure the legality of the situation, but I think this could be considered fraud in some areas. I'll elaborate you on what Unk's been doing. So he has credit cards, but they're mostly for in-store credit financing. They're not for cash or money back. So what he's been doing is purchasing TVs and saws and shit like that from Best Buy and Home Depot, and then trying to flip the money to Kijiji or pawn shops each day as he needs cash. Totally legitimate. This right here is absolutely retarded, like full blown. Not only are you taking a hit on the TVs in general, but the interest rate on that shit is high. It's a lose-lose situation. But it's not all gloomy for Adams. He may have thousands of dollars of bills a month, plus rent and food, but on the bright side, he's got some new visors. The at least a million visors, man. Oh, geez. My thing was not set right. There, now I got it. At least a million visors. 
that he paid for and is going to try to sell. Plus some kicks for some future vids. Got a ball on a budget, man. You got to do what you got to do. It was buy one pair, get one half off, a pay less. These are cool, man. These are called kangaroos. Gotta have those shoes, man. But yeah, ever hear of one step forward, two steps back? Well, Adams is one step back, then two more steps back, and then half a step forward. Bear in mind, Adams is also paying someone to film him with a drone too. Money well spent considering you only have $40 in the bank. By late September, Unk's basically broke and relying solely on his YouTube revenue, which is probably barely 500 bucks, and he had to borrow some more money from his parents just to get by day to day. He's right, he has to make it or he's gonna be paying off this debt for the rest of his life. How are you going to pay off $164,000 working a regular job? You won't when you spend like Adams. Whatever it takes, man. This is the at least a million mission. And Adams spending is probably one of the main issues. Money doesn't have any value to him. He must be from a rich family. That's the only way I could ever see someone being this irresponsible with their finances. Oh wait, I have seen another one this bad with their personal finances. Chris Chan and his mother. Wow. Take that in. Uncle Adams is at the same money management skills as Chris Chan. And people have the audacity to talk shit about Jason. At least he owns his own place, kind of. Regardless, Adams isn't done racking up the debt though. He doesn't have the money to pay his editor for his new music video. Luckily, he was able to work out a deal with him. We're doing the final edits on the At Least A Million music video. It looks really good. I'm really happy about it. But I don't have the money to pay the guy and I'm trying to stay positive and figure out a way to do this. Um, I don't know, I have an hour and 45 minutes before I'm supposed to go there so if you believe in miracles, I need one. <laughs> I'm hoping that somebody phones and buys my car so that I have the money and then I somehow get over there to pay him so that I can get it and release it tomorrow. By the beginning of October, he was able to sell his car and release his song. But the only thing that really did for him was cover the cost of producing his video and the rest basically went to bills and rent. So he's not even ahead, selling his car just kind of further limits his options. As the vlogs continue, Ankh tries to reassure his viewers that everything isn't that bad. His new song is being played on the radio, he just signed a tour deal. It goes to show you, never ever ever give up. Perseverance. Even when it seems like it's impossible, even when it seems like the world's against you. Don't worry about that, keep going no matter what you saw in the previous episodes how i was struggling to pay for the at least a million music video i shouldn't have actually made that but i did it anyway i produced the video with no money sold my car to pay my video guy there's always a way to do it you know you have to do whatever it takes to get it done honest to god that's the mentality it's not so much about the circumstances being right it's about the desire, create the circumstances. And look what's happening now, man. If you watch those videos to now, oh man, people are gonna hear me on the radio and stuff and then they're gonna come check out these videos and see what I went through to make that happen. He forgets to tell us though until months later that he actually had to pay upwards of $50,000 to get his music played on the radio. That's where a large chunk of his investment went to. I thought the only person using radio nowadays was a review bra. I've already have I already have mixed feelings about this to be quite honest. I mean it's just it's just how I see it, but I have mixed feelings about this to be quite honest. Um But I guess I was wrong though. The tour fell through also. Unk is very vague when he talks about it. He elaborates later that the manager he had basically was scamming him. His manager knew the radio DJ that charged him fifty thousand dollars, and the manager actually received a cut for setting them up. I'm assuming the fraudulent actions Unk talks about were from his manager. And while this stuff does tend to happen, I know a few people who are into the whole underground music scene, and there's tons of people just waiting to take your money. He may be broke, but at least he's got some more TVs to flip. There are 10 TVs here, and there are 3 TVs elsewhere, a total of 13 televisions. So what's going on, Uncle Adams? Are you in the TV business now, or what? So there's a reason why I went in depth on the first 9 vlogs. Those were all pre-recorded leading up to February 10th and released on the same day. Which means everyone got to see this whole shit show all at once. And when you have dumpster fires out there, you're gonna get people that gather around them. And Uncle was definitely getting a boost in exposure, but it definitely wasn't the kind he was expecting. Anthony also cut one of this pretty quickly and released a video addressing the whole situation, seeing as Uncle was a topic he covered in the past. If you're going to make it in the music industry, you have to be self-aware enough to know when something is or is not working and this doesn't even just hold for the music industry. This holds for pretty much every dream job that, that you could or could not have. You need to accurately 
assess what your abilities are, how those abilities are going to take you anywhere. Like you need to ask yourself, well, am I actually bad or mediocre at this thing that I'm trying to do? And if I am, how could I get better? How could I improve? And if I'm good at it, and, and I'm a talented individual at this particular thing, how can I get it to actually benefit me? Because if you know anything about the music industry and you know anything about popularity and album sales and music trends, that it's not always talent that ends up putting people over the edge and getting people into the music industry and, and generates record sales. A lot of the time it's image, a lot of the time it's hype, a lot of the time it's trendiness. And if you're not at least kind of playing to those uh, uh, aspects of popularity at least a little bit, um, you're, you're probably not going to uh, make it, honestly. And while his advice is harsh but true, so did Unk finally take a step back and reassess the situation? Hell no. He just locked down his comments, changed all his contact information. It's over now. You can't comment on my YouTube. You can't comment on my Instagram. My Twitter profile is private. There's no email that I can be reached at. And they don't have a platform anymore, okay? To Unk, this was a good idea. But when you actually think about it, it's a terrible one. Because Unk's trolls and haters, are his fans. They're the same people. Uncle Adams doesn't really understand internet culture, or it could be he's in denial, but either way he doesn't get that even though his audience memes him, it doesn't necessarily mean they hate him. Well, some of them do, but a lot of them are just in it for the laughs. And those people in original posting are pretty fucking funny. In my opinion, the best one is probably the whole Unc saved me from self-harm meme. The idea is to write something along the lines of, I just want to say thank you to Uncle Adams for saving my life because when I first started listening to your music, it has changed my life so that when I have a bad day and when I do self-harming to myself, I stop, then listen to your music and it helps to calm me down so i want to thank you uncle adams or next comment i have attempted suicide three times and because of your i am stronger music video saved my life i really thank you for saving my life yeah see this is where the comedy aspect comes in because Unc takes this stuff literal i highly doubt his music has prevented self-harm hey i could be wrong though Maybe I'm misunderstanding the healing power of memes. Next comment. Wow, man, this song is amazing. I could listen to it all day and never get bored. So even after all the trolling, all the debt, Unk still hasn't learned much. He's still living day by day making bad decisions. One of the more recent events that affected his public image was when he tried to sell his top hat from his music video for a well-rounded price of $10,000. You know what? I'm, uh, I'm obviously in some debt, as you know, because of this series. And I figured, why not sell this hat? We'll see if somebody really wants to buy it. So I've created a certificate of authenticity that says that I hereby certify that this is the hat that I wore in the original video. I've signed it on the inside. Yeah, no one bought it. So we decided to give it away in a random retweet contest, which wasn't so random. It appears it was just a ploy to network with another musician. Let's just say the fans were not happy. And Kobe, well, he had to save face. And he did the only way he knew how. Uncle Adams, after five years on the grind, you've got 20,000 listeners on Spotify. But do you realize 18,000 of those are from original posting? And that's not a lie. They're your followers, like it or not. With a few exceptions, they're the only eyes that you got. So you can hide from them, protect your pride from them, or interact with them and try to be taught. If you're an aspiring YouTuber, don't do random giveaways. It's just not worth it. Speaking of things not being worth it, can we talk about Unk's trip to the Arctic Circle? Yeah, in May of this year, Unk flew to a small town in Nunavut. For my American viewers, Nunavut is like that place behind the wall they talk about in Game of Thrones. It's literally a barren wasteland. And Unk went there to open for a magician, which he didn't even record, so there's no evidence of it even happening. Hey guys, back at the Heritage Center for a minute. Um, we're supposed to fly out in a couple hours, but there's a blizzard, so it sounds like it might be cancelled. Might be stuck up here for a couple of days. Unk is in an interesting situation, because right now he's trying to capitalize off his meme status. By selling merch, trying to find other ways to fund his production of Original 2. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda curious to see how he's gonna go about it. Will it be filled with more delusions of grandeur like the rest of the music? Or will he embrace the meme like he says he's starting to? He has asked Fantano for a cameo, so you never know. To be honest, we're actually due for another at least a million mission vlog soon. So we might just find out. Either way, so far in Unk's mission, his whole way of thinking has been self-destructive. It sounds all nice and epic, dropping everything and going after your dreams. 
but it gets to a point where you always need to have a fallback plan. Unk didn't care about that, and he honestly thought that if he put himself so far in the hole, the only way to get out would be to literally make a million dollars. The universe would reward him with all the success he's been striving for. And no. The universe eats shit like that up and spits it out. The only reward you get in this universe is survival. And the only way to survive is adaption. Unk uses this analogy about burning your boat so you can't go back as a way to justify his actions. But in reality, all he's doing is burning his resources and making up excuses to reassure himself that he hasn't made a mistake. His house, his car, his savings his investor's money, which in reality is most likely his parents, his credit, what's next? Well, might as well throw the firstborn in there. 